All right, in this video, guys, I want to show you how to make a easy, fairly inexpensive tabletop humidity setup. And so far, I've done a lot of uh, like monotub grows and uh, species that can handle high CO2. But now we're going to switch it up a little bit and we're going to do some species that need a little more fresh airflow. So I want to show you how to handle that on the cheap. I've tried a lot of uh, incarnations of this. And uh, this setup right here that I'm going to show you is by far the one that's worked the best for me. Uh, most people, including myself, when they first start out doing this, you see those like mini greenhouses online. And uh, they come with these cheap green wire shelving units here uh, like these. I still have some kicking around here. And uh, it's really thin wire. doesn't have a great coating on it. And they work great at first, but eventually they just, they rust out on you really fast and they just, the whole thing becomes a mold magnet and you end up chucking it. Uh, one lesson I've learned is that, you know, if you want to do this like me, uh, without a, you know, fancy positive pressure set up and all kinds of filtration, just basically doing it wherever in your house, uh, what you want to do is you want to set up that you can clean easily. Um, so basically you want to be able to carry the whole thing outside and uh, clean it all out. You know, spray it down with some 10% bleach, rinse it down real good, let it air dry in the sun. And that's how this setup is uh, where it works out so great right here because um, we're just using a, a basic... Uh, wire storage shelving unit. I got this from Home Depot. Uh, you can see though it's a lot better quality than than that thin green stuff that comes with the mini greenhouses. Um, it's a lot thicker, heavier wire. has a real nice like plastic coating on it. I'll run down the equipment list real quick here and then I'm just gonna put the whole thing together for you and uh, so you can see it all put together and I'll talk about it more at that point. But um, I just have I have a plastic storage shelving unit here. Um, this is just gonna be a stand basically for our humidifier. And these are nice because you can adjust the height. Uh, these are just like thin plastic tubes for legs. And uh, you can cut those down to whatever length you want to get the height you want because we're basically we're gonna be pumping in our humidity up here at the top of this. This is where our blocks are actually gonna sit here on these shelves. And we're going to tent the whole thing in with uh, just a clear plastic garbage bag. Again, this is uh, some contractor bags I got from Home Depot. These are 50-gallon HDX extra-large clear trash bags. And these work great. Um, basically, I'll just use, you know, I'll do one or two runs out of one bag. And then, uh, like at my local grocery store here, they have a bin where you can recycle uh, clean plastic bags. So then you can go ahead and recycle this. Uh, so there's no waste, and these shelves are obviously reusable. I've used this one many times. And like I said, this, this shelving unit, I can just pick this up. I can carry the whole thing outside super easy, clean it down, let it air dry, and then bring it back in for the, for the next grow. So we have our stand, our shelves for our, um, our humidifier to get it at the right height. Um, I have a, a little humidity gauge here, and I got this from the pet store, actually. I think this is for, like, uh, reptile aquariums, reptile cages. Uh, so that, you know, probably not super accurate, but good enough. It gives you a good indication of hu your humidity inside your chamber. Um, we got our bag. Uh, we have a, our humidifier here. This is just a simple ultrasonic. And I just took a PVC plumbing fitting and hot glued it to the top here. And uh, that just allows us to take some length of pool hose that I have here. That's also available at your big box stores. And that fits right into there. And that'll pump the ultrasonic vapor right into the chamber for us. One thing I learned too is that you don't want to have a real long run of hose because eventually, especially if you run for a couple flushes with this thing, you know, you're running it for a couple few weeks, you're basically, you're going to end up getting black mold. It's inevitable. Um, you just need to try and manage it. And uh, like, that's why it's so important to be able to take everything outside when the grow is done and just completely clean it out. But one source of the black mold is uh, it'll appear first like in this fitting here or maybe in this hose. You'll see it right in the hose. And uh, that's why the, the longer run of hose you use, the, 
the likelier that the black mold's going to appear there. Um, it seems like when you go with the shorter run, it holds it off for a longer period of time. Everything I'm using too is pretty much white. Uh, I try to get white, white hose, white fittings, white shelves. And that's just because of the mold I was just talking about. The first thing that's going to pop up is going to be that black mold. And a lot of times you'll smell it uh, before you see it. It has a kind of a weird sour smell to it. If you start to smell that, it's probably time to uh, look around and clean all your stuff out. So I'm going to have this humidifier raised up pumping humidified air into our chamber and this is going to be running on a repeat cycle timer so this is a repeat cycle timer right here these are available on amazon or ebay uh, it's basically just a, a wall timer that's modified so it runs on a shorter time frame each one of these little tabs is only 30 seconds so right now this will just continuously run uh, your humidifier it'll kick it on for 30 seconds and then it'll be off for a minute on for 30 seconds, off for a minute. And I'm gonna start off running my humidifier on about half power, which that's about half power right there. You can see the vapor coming out of it, invisible mist. So I'm gonna start it off. You're gonna have to make adjustments based on how much airflow you have in your room and your ambient humidity levels and everything. So you can make adjustments either here on your dial, more or less humidity, or you can also adjust your uh, repeat cycle timer to have more or less on off time, whatever you think you need. Um, but uh, for free air, we're not gonna run any fan in this other than um, just the, the fan that's running the ultra, ultrasonic humidifier. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make slits in the plastic bag. So we're just gonna get some free airflow from the room um especially when you're working in a small environment like this like a lot of people they want to try uh like small computer fans and stuff like that and that just makes it really difficult to manage uh in my experience uh when you they either move too much air uh, and they dry your stuff out and it just uh just doesn't work out well especially when you're doing a real small environment like this so i recommend just doing slits in your plastic that seems to work out way better just get the free airflow from the room because if you have a fan like blowing or heavy air moving over your mushrooms it doesn't matter if you have a ton of humidity in there if you have a ton of airflow too much airflow uh, it's still going to dry your mushrooms out so we're going to get this all set up and uh, i'll let you see the the finished product i'll set up on the table what it's supposed to look like and we have we're actually going to be doing two species in this because these are just about ready to fruit. Uh, we have some uh, lion's mane bags over here on this side that are almost ready. They're probably a couple few days away. And then we have some nice uh, Bratislavian blue oyster blocks here as well. And actually oyster and lion's mane are a great grow to do together. I have three bags of each. They both need uh, a lot of humidity, but also a lot of fresh airflow to form normally. And so I'm going to grow these together right in the same chamber here and it should work out great. Here's what it looks like all put together. Big picture here. It took me about 15 minutes to get it all put together. I just obviously put the bag over top of our fruiting shelves and I cut three slits on three sides. I know I don't cut a slit on the humidifier side, but the slit on the other three sides, basically from the top shelf here down to the bottom shelf and I use these little binder clips to um, keep everything tight these work great for doing this and I just trim the bag off at table level all the way around and that's pretty much it so the fruiting chamber is all set up uh, we got slits all the way around like I said to let some fresh air in from the room keep our oysters from getting all leggy on us and uh, then we have our humidifier up on our stand here and we want to pump the humid humidity in at the top of the chamber and just let it cascade down through. And again, this is plugged into the uh, repeat cycle timer here. I'm not going to run the humidifier yet. Uh, I'm still a couple few days away from those blocks being ready to fruit. So I'm going to wait till the last minute to fire this up because once you fire your humidity up, you're on that road to eventual mold development. Um, so I usually don't fire it up till the last minute, uh, but this is pretty much set up to run itself. 
Uh, I do find that I like having it up on a table like this. Um, it's just a little easier to manage. Uh, I can do everything through the slits in the plastic here in terms of moving blocks in and out and picking up boards, picking fruits, whatever you need to do. Um, but I just find everything, uh, it's a little easier to do everything when it's, when it's up on a table like this. But if you don't have that option, uh, if you just need to basically have it sitting on the floor, I just suggest putting a, like a clear plastic storage tote under it because you are going to get some condensation, some dripping, and I can easily just move it over and wipe the tabletop off here. Uh, but you don't want to be soaking your floor or your carpet. So if you do have to run it right on the ground, uh, like I said, just put a clear plastic storage tote under it and that'll catch all the moisture for you. It's a pretty easy setup all in all. Uh, usually the most difficult part for me is not burning myself with the hot glue when I'm hooking these fittings up, but uh, that's just me. I'm really good at burning myself with that hot glue every time. I don't know how, but it just seems to happen. But anyway, uh, you just need to, you know, hit your big box or hardware store and uh, play with some different fittings and hoses. There's lots of different options. Just find one that fits your humidifier and it'll work for your uh, humidity chamber setup. And I do recommend not gluing your hose into the fitting. Uh, I have this as just friction fit, which is nice. You can pull it out and clean everything out. Um, I've really learned that simpler is better when you're doing these humidity chamber kind of setups because... The more parts you have, uh, the more parts and pieces, the more difficult it's going to be to clean. Just keep it simple. Uh, that's less less things you have to carry outside, less things to clean once your grow's over, and the easier it is to uh, to set back up. So I'm going to end the video with some pictures of the last few grows that I've done in this uh, this exact same setup, so you can see the awesome mushrooms it grows.